Who? Ha ha! So, uh, now that I don't blend in with the background, um, wiring. You're gonna need to get wiring that's adequate to carry the loads that you're gonna be using. And, uh, here's a chart showing basic uh, wiring suggestions. Um, based on the lengths of wiring you're going to be running to and from the device at uh, 6 and 12 volt currents. Now, um, I strongly recommend getting wiring from your local recycling center, which recycles bulk metal and stuff, not just the place that you take cans. Um, I've been very happy with both the quality and price of their products. I found it to be cheaper than anything I found on eBay, and I found um, the quality to be excellent. So it's also good for the environment. I recommend going to the recycling center to get your wiring. Now it begins! Yeah. Alright, so I want to talk to you about a few devices you're going to need to use um, in order to be safe and in order to keep your battery from draining. And these are fuses, switches, and circuit breakers. Um, a fuse, there's different kinds of fuses. There are these inline fuses, which uh, are often found in the uh, lighter outlet adapter of your inverter. They're like tubes, and they have a they have a, a small metal filament in them, and they'll fry if you get too much current through those. All right, and another is a blade fuse. It has two prongs here, and it's got a small wire in the center here, and that will fry if too much current goes through it. Uh, they all have different ratings. This one is five amperes. They're a one-time use deal, and uh, they're a pain in the ass to replace. And uh, they're cheap, but I don't recommend it. I recommend uh, using a circuit breaker to uh, disrupt the current if there's going to be too much current running through it. There are a few types of circuit breakers available. If you want to follow me over here a little bit. One type is an automatic automatically resetting circuit breaker and it quickly resets itself to the on position after being tripped and uh, at a frequency of 50 or 60 Hertz um, the electricity will quickly use up the cycles of this device and it tends to break after a while so I don't recommend these um, There's another type of circuit breaker. Um, there are quite a few. Others have push button resets, but they're always automatically on. Another type of circuit breaker, if you'll follow me in here. Ready. So another type of circuit breaker is this switching circuit breaker. This is the off position, this is the on position. And when it's off, um, it's off. So it cuts that current to the inverter. So it's kind of like having a switch and a circuit breaker in one. Now, this kind of circuit breaker is typically more expensive. It can be found at a boating shop for between $50 and $75, or on eBay for $4 to $6. Um, gotta love boating shops. On second thought, if you don't get the cheapest version of it on eBay, the cheapest one on eBay, you could be spending $17. You should see something happen. Uh, eventually. Did you see that? That's affirmative. Alright, now notice that the circuit breaker is now in the off position. This unit is rated to do that 10,000 times. And if you do it well, if you install things well, it probably won't happen at all. You're going to need a switch. Um, you're going to need to switch either way because 
inverter designers are freaking cheap, frankly. And it really pisses me off. And um, basically, when you run a current uh, to the inverter, even if it's in the off position, it will try, it will use some current, and your battery will slowly discharge until it dies. So you need some kind of switch to manually cut off the flow of electricity from that inverter. Another kind of switch is this device here called a relay. And it's an automatically activated switch when you hook the control circuit up to something that is on when your vehicle is on and off when your vehicle is off, such as the accessories wire of your ignition switch. The relay turns on or off the load circuit. So um, with this relay here, you can have your inverter only power up when the vehicle is on and have it automatically turn off when you're gone. All right, now that you know what relays, switches, fuses, and circuit breakers are, along with inverters and vehicle batteries, I am going to show you a few suggestive schematics on how you can hook up your inverter. Here they are. The first two pictures are for if you're going to wire up your inverter to your lighter outlet wiring. One configuration is for a lighter outlet that is automatically off when your vehicle is off, and another configuration is for when your outlet is on when your vehicle is off. The next three are for higher power situations. You may choose to follow one of these diagrams, except change the circuit breaker that has a switch on it for circuit protection device and switch. And the advantages of this are, A, you can have the circuit protection closer to the battery, which lessens the likelihood of a short circuit. And B, switches are simply smaller than switching circuit breakers. So if you want to mount a switch somewhere and a switching circuit breaker is simply too large to work, you can get it to work with that. What are you doing? I thought you said you didn't have to video anything. Well, I can do this. Oh, whatever. All right, so this is my ground wire, and uh, I had connected it to this this washer here. It was a solid connection, and this washer was right here, and it was in solid contact with this metal. And as you can see, this metal, um, if if you can get back there. It runs back to this bracket. You see the yellow right up here? Um, that is the painted car frame. Um, so you can imagine that the bolt you see right below it would go into, into the car frame. And you see this uh, structure here. You see how it's connected um, to this metal. There it is. And this metal travels down and it has a bracket that goes to the car frame. But unfortunately, this, although it looks like ground, is not ground. Um, it does not have a good electrical connection with the body of the car. I don't understand why this is, but it doesn't work. So I'll have to find a different grounding point. And uh, so I've tested it with my volt ohm meter with the battery plugged in, car battery plugged in. Put the red red probe um, onto one of the, the positive wire of the lighter outlet device. And I've tested different areas and seen how quickly um, each area goes up to 12.6 volts, which is the voltage of my battery. And the quicker it is, um, I imagine the better electrical connection it has and the more efficient energy wise your whole system will be so the more gas mileage you will get it's a small difference but it's nice to know